well, by and large, by citing causes and mechanisms. At least that's my conviction, how they should explain, and I also think that that's how they most often actually do explain. Uh, that might be a bit boring answer, but on a very general level, I think that's the case. So I think there's a couple of things that that rules out, a couple of kind of probably misleading ideas that some economists might now and then entertain. One is that understanding via the kind of individual rationality is somehow privileged or special way of understanding phenomena. I don't think that's the case. Or that just, just by unifying a large variety of different kinds of social phenomena under a very small set of principles or axioms is explanatory by itself. I also think that's not explanation as such. Well, yeah, of course, there are differences in economic phenomena. There are the characteristics of economic phenomena that they make them somewhat different to other kinds of social phenomena. There are all kinds of historical uh, contingencies that influence economic theorizing that makes economic explanations look distinctive in many ways. But as I already said, in, in a very kind of fundamental way, I do think that all scientific explanations are of a, of, a, of a single, or at least a few kind, only a few different kinds. By itself, no, I don't think it is. I think all explanation is in, uh, requires empirical support by some, some way or another. Of course, ex uh, philosoph philosophical thinking, philosophical methods, philosoph philosophical competences can help in explaining and understanding things, but, but I don't think philosophy as such is in the business of explaining anything. Yeah, so I, I'm a self, uh, I'm a card-carrying naturalist, so I, I don't think that there is, a, there is a thing that would be a specific philosophical method. That doesn't mean that there are differences in com individual competences that philosophers have with respect to other scientists. And that doesn't also think that the kind of cognitive and epistemic competences that philosophers have would be necessarily somehow inferior to other kinds of competences that some empirical scientists have. I just think that they are, they are different. But in, in the end, there's a continuum between uh, ways of understanding the world. And I think philosophy is on that continuum. Topic-wise, probably it does, because the grand tradition has created the, the the environment in which my, my philosophical career has, my philosophical thinking has, has grown. Uh, and, and the topics have been like realism and philosophy of science and, and explanation and underst understanding from von Richt, those are of course central. But kind of specific, what would be kind of specific tools and competences that the great analytic tradition in, 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 in Finland and in Helsinki has, I, do, I haven't been actually that, that like mod modal epistemic logic and, and, and formal theories of truth likeness. I haven't thus far used them, at, at least. Like from the big international names, I, I, had, I had this idea of, of, of my, my WWW, which would be something like Wittgenstein, Woodward and, and Wimsett. Uh, but now the, I think the Wittgenstein is now currently kind of channeled through Robert Brandom. So those would be the big big philosophy, philosophical influences. Through my interest in causality, I wasn't interested in, in economics to begin with. I was interested in causality and quite a few of the examples in this causal, causality literature had to do with econometrics and I was kind of in, intrigued. Well, this is something that philosophy seems to be almost in touch with the practice of, pra practice of science and then I had to learn something about it and then I went to study economics. And then, of course, uh, Uskali Mäki came back to Finland and uh, we, we got this uh, center going with a focus in philosophy of social science. To be a good philosopher of anything, you have to have at least some, compet some kind of at least rudimentary working competence in, in, in the thing that you are studying. I, uh, I, 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 I cannot admit that I would be a qualified economist, no way, and I don't have full, full economics degree, but you have to have some idea of not just what people say, but how things actually work. 
today uh, uh, it seems that quite uh, a lot of interest is put, put into policy relevant issues, but at, at, the, at the individual level. So these behavioral policies, uh, experimental economics, and that it's different branches of experimental economics and its relation to uh, policies, those are clearly, clearly very hot issues. So I, what I still think is quite interesting and definitely kind of niche worth exploring for you or future philosophers economics is, is, is macro. Because, because there's clearly uh, demand for more philosophical reflection of macroeconomics than there is actually supply at the moment.